of degenerates. Here he is, the man of the moment. Certainly now there definitely will be uh, a bounty on his head. Maybe not in London, but if he comes around the streets of the Midlands in Ireland, he might be at risk. What a run of form. Absolutely. Talk about driving in the boot game after game. One selection after the other. Nigel, the floor is yours. Take it away. Well, Paddy, you know, even, even a broken clock is right twice a day, isn't it? You know, <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna take days like that. We've had a brilliant had a brilliant run, a fantastic run. Uh, every sort of game we we predicted, we got pretty much on the money. Um, so it's great to have days like that. And so uh, just got to say one thing, to you, Paddy. Football's coming home, Paddy. Yeah. Football's well, hey, you know what? It, it, listen, we won't start singing it yet, but it's definitely alive and uh, has a chance. But listen, let's just touch on, before we move into a lot of interesting games in the playoffs, just the last few games in Group F. Come on, just, just what a finish to a group. Poor Hungary, you know, Germany. Uh, like, it was just twist and turn after twist and turn. What a night of football. I know, Paddy, it was incredible. And um, the, the game that England are playing in the last 16 uh, was supposed to be in Dublin. Obviously, because it was supposed to be uh, the game that you know the, the, the now England played Germany was supposed to be in Dublin, but obviously because of COVID, the, the, the game couldn't be held in Dublin. And it was my birthday. It's my birthday on Monday, and um, yeah, I was going to come over to Dublin to see my old Macanoli and uh, and, and uh, Paddy, if he was coming over from Sweden, and the boys. I was going to come over to Dublin to watch the game. But I'm lucky to say that I've got me two tickets. Oh, no, you're off. You're heading. Germans, so, hey. VIP. Hey, you have yeah, you have the satchels full now with the bookies' money. So you have any then Paddy Powers treating you. <laughs> well, the thing was, I didn't know who because it was such a strange day. One minute I was watching England be Hungary, then I was watching England be Portugal, then I was watching England France, and finally England be Germany with the last six minutes. And really, that was the game that I wanted. I wanted to England to play Germany. That was the one I thought that England. Out of all the teams, I actually think England probably match up better. Again, obviously, I wanted to play Hungary, but I think if you were going to play the top three, the one team I didn't want was France. Uh, and I think getting Germany was probably their uh, the one team that I think going head to head against the Germans, even though they've got a great chance. But it was supposed to be the weekend that we were in Dublin. And what a weekend that would have been England, Germany, and Dublin. That would have been crazy. Yeah, very, very interesting. I just thought I got some enjoyment out watching the game last night. Uh, hungry v Germany. I thought, what? Like it was. If you're talking about football being exciting, that was an exciting game, and you predicted over the three point five goals as well. So let's see. So now, Mister Seely, can we carry that run of form into the playoffs? We have Wales versus Denmark on Saturday. Italy versus Australia. Denmark, I think, are uh, odds on to beat Wales, or just slightly odds on. Wales around the four to one. How are them two games, Nigel? What are you thinking? Any angle here, and uh, have Wales any chance of surviving? Well, Wales definitely have a chance of surviving. I mean, they're uh, they're a four to one shot to win in ninety minutes. But um, just bear in mind that game that you watched was an end of group game. You know, so now we're going to go into the knockout stages. The games might be tight. They're not going to be so end to end. T teams don't want to lose. So they, you know, a lot of teams might set their stalls out and say, "Well, we can go to extra time or maybe even penalties." So I don't think we're going to see these these end to end games that we saw last night. Uh, obviously, from a personal point of view, I want Denmark to win this game. I bet them at eighty to one at the start, and I bet them at sixty sixes just before uh, the last group game, which they won uh, to get against Russia. So I'm on at eighties and sixty sixes. So now twenty to one. They've been handed them. The winners of this game have got a great chance. I mean, this this half is where England are in, Denmark and Wales are in, is so, so weak compared to the other half. And Denmark have a great chance of making a quarter final or semi final. Um, I did see some prices go up originally when this match was announced at 10 to 11 for Denmark. I think that's too big. I, you know, they're, they're starting to be nibbled a little bit. They're into five to six now. William Hill's at five to six. Uh, if you can get 10 to 11, I think. Um, a couple of smaller firms at 10 to 11, but I think that Denmark will, will, will be bet and will start probably nearer the four to five or eight to 11 mark for this game. Um, I think Wales are, are, have done exceptionally well, but up against the top nations of European football, I just don't think they're, they're, that calibre is that, is, is that strong. Um, okay, they played Turkey and won 2 0, but Turkey would probably be the worst team in the tournament. Um, and, 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 and I, 
he played um, Italy as well. But Italy made all those changes and still beat them. And that was as this side that already qualified. Um, I've got to go towards Denmark here. I think 10 to 11, 5 to 6 is too big a price. I don't think it's going to be very high scoring. But I do think that Denmark have some real momentum behind them after what happened in the first game against uh, with Ericsson. I think since then they've galvanised as a country, as a team. They've got stronger and stronger as the tournament's got on. They've got better. They were absolutely fantastic against Russia, putting four goals past them. You know, new stars are emerging from them. They've got a very good goalkeeper, a very good defender, a very good captain, and they've got a goal scorers in Paulson up front. And I think that they'll be too strong for Wales. And I'm, and I'm going to start off with the Denmark win at five to six. Take the five to six, take the 10 to 11, because I think they'll start a lot shorter. Yeah, definitely very interesting. And uh, look, like you said, being on at them kind of prices, if they get through this match, that's when you start getting the, the D-Gen sweats, as the fellow <laughs> says. You probably have them already. But <laughs> what about Italy v Austria? Personally, Italy are four tonight. Look, they have been pretty good so far. Are Austria slaughters, or was it Amsterdam slaughters, or have they any chance of trouble in Italy? I don't think they have any chance whatsoever. I think mean, Italy have been probably arguably the best team in the tournament. You know, if you look at what they've done and what they've achieved and the confidence around this camp is phenomenal. Mancini has done an unbelievable job at Italy. They're unbeaten. It's only like 30 matches or something like that. But the, the big thing here is they um, they rested eight players and still look really comfortable. I mean, their, their strength in depth is frightening. Their midfield, Locatelli, Verratti... Uh, the, the, the insignia, the, the, the wing up, they've got goals from all over the pitch. Immobile scoring goals as well for them up front. So, this is going to be a very, very, very tricky match against the sides in Austria who I think are really, really poor. Um, you're not going to get rich betting Italy at four to nine, but one bet that I do like is Italy to win to nil. I mean, I think that's a cracking price. So, five to four, I saw on that. They were 13 to 10. Uh, you've got to go back to, I think, the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The last 12 internationals that Italy have played, they've won the lot and haven't conceded. They beat Wales 1 0, they beat Switzerland 3 0, they beat Turkey 3 0. All three of those sides are arguably better than Austria. Uh, in the warm up, they beat San Marino 7 0, Czech Republic 4 0, Lithuania 2 0, Bulgaria yeah. 2 0. Just they don't concede. So um, if, you, if you're looking for. Um, for a, a way to get with Italy at a decent price, Italy to win to nil at five to four, it's a cracking price to me. I can't see I can't see Austria struggling, causing any problems for at all. They played England in the pre in, in the in a, in a friendly before the tournament, and they could still be playing now. They wouldn't have scored against England, and uh, I think the Italians win to nil. Yeah, definitely interesting. Five to four sounds a little generous with the form and the more importantly, the back stats, the back, you know, the back record. Right, let's move on. So the Netherlands beat Czech Republic and Belgium versus Portugal. A real interesting game for me, that eight o'clock game on Sunday. Well, let's start so with Netherlands v Czech. I think 13 to 20 was the last price I seen for the Netherlands and Czech around the four to one. Right? Yeah, I mean Czech Republic were really poor against England, but they'd already qualified. So, you know, you can't really take much into that. They didn't play well against Scotland, but 1-2-0. And then they just they, they, they were clearly second best against Croatia as well. But uh, I think Holland have got an extra goal threat. I know, uh, you know, they, they, they've scored the most goals in the tournament or second most goals in the tournament of Holland. And I think their attacking ability that they have uh, is, going, is going to be too strong from here. I think the Czech Republic have, have, have pretty much hit their level. They're, they're, not, they're not going to get to the last six. They're not going to get to the quarterfinals. Um, I'm looking at this game again. I'm coming at it from a, dip, a similar kind of angle that we had in the last game, where I'm going to play on the, the man in form, the pie. Um, you know, I, I, I think that he takes penalties. He, you saw from the game the other day, he was involved in everything going forward. I know Wijnaldum scored two goals, but Dupai is their main goal threat. Uh, he will start. Uh, he's, he's taken off a little bit. He, he, coming to the tournament, he was under a little bit of pressure because there was a move to Barcelona that was on his mind. And I think that's a big problem with Harry Kane. I think Harry Kane's been affected about this potential move to Manchester City. Sancho as well hasn't featured. He's involved in the move. I don't think it's good to have that, that mindset that you might be moving. Now he's going to Barcelona. And now he can focus on this tournament. And I think Dupai to score in a game that I believe will have goals. I think there's a lot of goals. Every game that, um, that uh, Holland playing is, is, is conducive to goals because the way they play, they attack, 
They've got wingers that like to go at defences. And I think the Czechs, are, their strength is to break things down in the middle of the park with uh, Chucek and uh, Kofal. But uh, I think the bet here is Dubai to score any time. Um, I'm, going, I'm going back to the same thing again. And the game that I think offers goals, five to four, Dubai to score any time on penalties as well. Uh, he's already scored twice in this tournament. And I think that uh, Dubai will get on the score sheet again at five to four. Yes, very interesting. And the last day he scored first and he assisted the second too, which was definitely, uh, you know, a little bit uh, unlucky with your massive selection there. But anyway, let's move our Belgium v Portugal. So this is an interesting game. This is very, very tough to call. Very, very difficult because Belgium attack-mindedly uh, are probably one of the most exciting teams in the tournament. Uh, and Portugal are usually quite dull in their approach. They're usually quite negative. I mean, they, they've they been a little bit more offensive-minded this tournament because of Cristiano Ronaldo is the top goal scorer in five goals. But Belgium will uh, will test them big time. And I saw that when, when Portugal played Germany and conceded four goals, you they're, they're vulnerable if you go at them. The French said they didn't need to go at them. They knew that a draw was going to get them through. If they, if there was any reason they needed to score the win, I thought they could, have, they could up a level and beat Portugal. Um, I, Ronaldo just keeps doing what he's doing. I mean, he's got. If he scores one more goal, he's the, he's the, the uh, top goal scorer ever in international football. Yeah, and I think, you know, and he'll probably get a penalty or a free kick, and he'll probably do it. Um, I think this could be. It's, it's a real tricky one this game because it could quite easily be nil nil, or it could quite easily be three three. You really, I think it's a bet to have in, in play. But if I was having a small lean now before the game, it wouldn't be a, a real high conviction bet. But I'd probably go for both teams to score as a yes. Because I think that uh, Belgium with De Bruyne, with Lukaku on fire, with uh, Hazard coming back in the side, just have goals in them. And their, their biggest problem is their defence. And with Ronaldo on a mission to be the number one yeah, top goal. He's going to be a big threat every time. Yeah. Uh, he's going to try. He's going to take free kicks, and even if, even if they're losing two nil, yeah, Ronaldo, he's, coming for he'll, he's, he's going to do it on a personal yeah. level. So I think that the goals will be the angle here. But I, you know, with, with Portugal, you can never tell that they're they're, they're, the, they're the best team in the world in European football actually to defend and get results and go to extra time and nick a result or win on a penalty. But um, Belgium, perennial underachievers. You know, when they get to this stage, they always seem to, uh, to run into one. But um, on this occasion, I think they've got too much going forward. So I'm going to lean towards goals. Both teams to score as a yes, but only small. Not, not really a, a huge bet on that. Yeah, it's a game I'm definitely looking forward to. And one I'm going to watch. Right, that will bring us then to Croatia versus Spain. I think Spain are not long, not well, they're around the age of 13 the last time I checked. France versus Switzerland, a later game. Uh, Croatia, have they any chance of trouble in Spain? That is the question. I don't think they have. I think they're, um, we know they, they, they're they an ageing team. Modric's 36 years of age. Um, he played it, all didn't stop, it didn't stop him from showing serious quality. The goal the other night. I know not much else, but the goal was definitely... Very different, though, playing Scotland and then yeah. playing Spain when you know you're not going to get the ball. So Spain are going to have 80% of possession and Modric's going to be running around chasing shadows. You know, it's more tiring when you haven't got the ball than when you have got the ball. And, I, and we know that Spain, and I think that Spain will just wear them down. I thought Spain were brilliant uh, yesterday. 5-0 five, five winners could have been 10. You know, they, they missed a penalty, could have been 6. And they really made a statement. And I think no one will want to play Spain. And, I, I, you know, they're one of my tips along with France to win it. I wish they were in the other half, but unfortunately they're not. But... Um, I think they will break down Croatia. I think they'll win quite easily. I think they'll win by at least more than one goal. Yeah. Uh, they're seven to ten, which is um, you know, if you like your odds on seven to ten with Skybet, uh, I think that's I think that's a cracking bet. If you do a double on uh, Spain and Denmark, that that's not a bad little little double for you. But um, if if you like a big bigger price odds, if you want to play on the Asian handicap, you can bet Spain minus one goal. So as long as they win by more than one goal, you can get a, a quite a decent price on that. But um, Spain have just got goal, their confidence now. They're a very young team, Spain. The average age is one of the lowest in the tournaments, along with England. They're very inexperienced. And they, they, they didn't get the results they deserved in their first two group matches. 85% of possession. They had so many scoring chances, couldn't score. But everything come together against Slovakia. I know it was a poor Slovakian side, 
But what that result will do for this Spanish team will give them huge confidence. And uh, I think they'll, 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 they'll come through here against the Croatians. I think the Croatians, in the heat, without the ball, and playing four games in a small, small period of time for an ageing Croatian side is going to be too much. Spain will win this quite comfortably, I think. Yes, very, very interesting angles. Right, France v Switzerland, and another team on fire. The French just looking so strong. Another one by your main anti-post pick. Uh, I think it's looking good for them. It is looking good, and you know what? I mean, they haven't even hit got out of first gear yet, the French side. And this is the scary thing about them. They've come through to top the group. They, they're unbeaten against Germany and Portugal, uh, and they're unbeaten against Hungary in their group section. But they haven't even got out of first gear, which just shows you they've got another level. And they come alive in the knockout stages. And uh, again, I feel that this could be very, very one-sided. I can't see Switzerland getting anything from this. Switzerland have scored a couple of goals in this tournament, but really they're, they're, they're pretty poor international level. They're very reliant on uh, uh, Shakiri, the um, the forward for um, for uh, Liverpool, who uh, he's older than me, he is. But he, uh, but he, I I think the French is, they have to come to the party now, the French, and I think they will. And uh, I did see four to seven. I know four to seven might not be a price that uh, many people would would want to bet, but definitely in a treble, I can't see the French making any step ups. I mean, they're the world champions; they know what to do in knockout stages. Probably France half time, France full time, seven to five. That uh, could be a, a better way to get with them. But Switzerland are a poor side, uh, a very poor side, uh, who were absolutely convincingly smashed by Italy. And uh, I think France are better than Italy. And um, I think France will win this very, very easily. Yeah, definitely. I like the sound of that seven to five, half time, full time. Right. Let's leave it there. Move on to Tuesday, the final leg of the first round of the playoffs. We have the game no one cares about, England versus Germany, and we have uh, Sweden versus Ukraine. Only God, very interesting game. England, the last time I checked, around 6-4, to four, Germany around the 9-5 to five mark. This is a game, Nigel, I'm sure a lot of people have interest in from a betting point and, and a, a watching point, you know? Well, the first thing you've got to do with any betting, as you know, Paddy, in any, you've got to take your loyalty out of it. You know, you know, and, and obviously there'll be a lot of English people who are betting England because it's England, because they want England to win. They can't bring themselves to bet Germany because they, they, they feel it's, it, 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 they're, they're, tra they're, they're traitor to their country. And there'd be a lot of Irish people who want to bet Germany to do one over on England. So, you, But when you're betting, you've just got to take that kind of mindset completely away from it. You've got to look at this game from a, from a, from a neutral perspective. And, and, I, and I'm looking at it from a neutral perspective. Um, Italy have been bet today. There's money come for it. Uh, sorry, Germany have been bet today. Money has come for Germany today. They were two to one. The two to one is long gone. Um, it's going to be nervy. It's going to be tight. It's going to be end to end. It, you, you know, whenever England look like they're going to win something or open up, something always goes wrong. A sending off, a, a penalty decision that isn't a penalty decision. It's going to be one of those nights. It's going to be a, a very nervy, very nothing with England in, in international football is ever easy. England should beat Germany. If you look at the players, you look at the attacking flair they've got, they should beat them. Defensively, the Germans are, are there for the taking, in my opinion. The thing is with Germany, they concede far too many goals. I mean, two goals against Hungary. They've conceded goals in, in, pre, in, uh, in warm-up matches against Northern Ireland, Latvia. They scored against them. You know, they very rarely keep clean sheets. But going forward, they're fantastic. And England are very similar to that. Prior to this tournament, England will always concede a goal, but score two or three. In this tournament, they've gone very pragmatic. They're very much defensively stronger. I feel is that both sides will go, go for it because I think that both sides will know that this is an opportunity for them to get to a final. Because if you, if you win this game, the route to the final is pretty easy. You know, nothing's easy, but it's much easier than the other half of the draw. I feel the angle here is goals. And I think that's the best way for any Englishman, any Irishman, any Scotsman, anybody to play because it's a neutral bet. I just cannot see this game not producing goals because they've got, they've got such attacking flair that defensively both sides are, are very poor. And I think both teams to score here is the bet at 10 to 11. Uh, that was underdog this morning. That was even money and odds against. So that's been bet. Not surprised. This, this game just screams goals. I wouldn't be surprised to see it. 2-1, 3-1, you know, either way. I don't, I don't, I really wouldn't like to predict which way it's going to go. I think England should 
and deservedly our favourites, but you can never trust England in a knockout stage of European Championships, and we could go in for the dreaded penalties. But I do think that goals are on the cards. So if you're going to have a bet, you want to be a neutral, want to have a little bit of interest on the game, both teams to score as a yes at 10 to 11. Yes, very, very interesting. Right, we move on to the lucky last, Sweden versus Ukraine. Hard enough game to call, I thought. Not a lot in it. Not a lot in it, but I wouldn't mind being a spectator in it with some Swedish women and some Ukraine <laughs> women. I've been to Stockholm and I've been to uh, Kiev and some of the most beautiful women in the world. So I think the cameraman will have a lovely afternoon spotting yeah. all the lovely ladies in the crowd. As far as the game yeah, is... Yeah, you won't know what score it is till after the match. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But the, the thing is with this game is that you, you um, it's quite two different contrasting styles, really. Sweden are very, very strong defensively and Ukraine are very good attacking, but not so great defensively. I think Sweden could turn out to be one of the most underrated teams in the tournament. Um, I really do. I thought you know, they, I think they've been brilliant in, in some of their matches. And Ukraine, OK, they scored two goals against, um, against uh, Holland, but they were hanging on for dear life against Macedonia in the second half. And they were dreadful against Austria. They got beaten 1-0. And I think I think Sweden have done everything right. They've topped the group that contained Spain. It could have beaten Spain. They hit the post in right at the last minute. Uh, they, they beat Slovakia. Second half, they were fantastic. And then they, they, they come, they beat Poland. You know, they, Poland got it back to 2-2. And then they scored to top the group. So I think that um, the angle here would be to get with Sweden in some kind of capacity. Um, you know, they're 7-5, to five, uh, which is probably a decent price. But my only fear, my only fear, is that um, this could be a, a close one, and we could go for penalties. It, it, it could go extra time. So obviously, the, the result of beating Sweden is going to happen in the in the ninetieth minute. So my my lean is towards Sweden, but I probably won't be betting this game. I'll probably be I won't be watching it because I'll still be too pissed from the uh, the England game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I won't be. I won't. I won't you have to tell what happened in, yeah, you won't, you'll have to tell me what happened in the morning. But I have, a, I have a slight, slight lean towards Sweden at the prices, but nothing really with much conviction. Yes, very, very hard to predict, all right. But anyway, as always, what a week. Let's just touch on a great week because, you know, one winner after the other. Relentless, as we say, driving the boot in. Let's hope next week we walk down the high street and hand them for their eviction notice. Nige, as always, it's been a pleasure. Really enjoyed your selection. Wrap it up for me. Give me three best bets for the degenerates of the first round of the playoff stages. Well, I, I, I'll tell you what I'll do, Kelly. I'll go on, 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 on Saturday. I think Italy to win to nil would be your best bet. On Sunday, I would go for both teams to score in Belgium and Portugal. Uh, and on, on on Tuesday, England, Germany, both teams to score as well. Monday, I will probably go for Spain, half-time, full-time. But I think if you're looking for a, a bet for like a, an accumulator, I think if you bet Denmark, Italy, Holland, Spain, France as a fourfold, you won't go far wrong. Lovely job. Nigel, as always, the cotton is officially over. Thanks. <laughs>